But we all remember the days of when our SoundCloud was a thing, right? Actually, just touring with like a, a twin is really yeah. good to like offset loneliness. Hey guys, so today I'm here with Cosmo from hey. Cosmo Um, My brother is actually <laughs> like near me right now, but he's setting up for a show we're doing later. So yeah. I'm like having a quick walk around with Lauren and we're just going to talk about like my myself because <laughs> we're doing that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's just gonna be hanging out and walking around the streets near the near the club we're playing at. Yeah. yeah. So we met. Okay, was it two years ago or is it one? I don't know. Wait, I think I was playing a show at my university. Was that the one? I remember I saw you at that show. Yeah. No, no, I knew them because I, I was like, hey, what are you doing here? And then you were oh, there. Oh yeah, yeah. So now I actually have no idea where I'm at. You went to the beach, right? Yeah, yeah. Went to um, <laughs> went to Bondi. Bondi is like the yeah. the famous beach in yeah. Sydney where everyone goes. And there's like a TV show about called Bondi Rescue, yeah. where yeah. everyone just like. Starts drowning and then these like Australian dudes like come out on their surfboards and save them and it's really popular in Australia and like Britain and stuff. So yeah, it's a dangerous beach. So watch out yeah, if you go there. That's when I was like studying abroad in Sydney just for like one semester. But we like yeah. hung out a few times. Yeah, and you were fine. You went to Bondi and you swam like way out with us. Yeah, and you, that was you were cool. fine. I can't, like remembering yeah. with, like the rocks and stuff. I was like, is this gonna be kind of scary? But uh, we're gonna do it. Yeah. So you grew up. In, was it in that area? Or? No, no, no. Um, so Bondi is like in the eastern suburbs. So it's yeah. like. The beach is eastern suburbs, and then it's the city, which is like the middle, and then the inner west, which is like where I live. So it's kind of like 15 minutes drive at best yeah. from the beach, and then like a 10 minute drive to the city. But I, I grew up in a place called Petersham, yeah. which is um, near, near a place called Newtown, which is kind of more well known than where I live. I mean, if, if you know anything, if you don't know, like I said, you're not going to know any of these places. Petersham's kind of like, it really gentrified over the last kind of um, 15 years. So when I was growing up there, like really young, it was kind of just a place where people would buy houses because they were a bit cheaper at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, gradually it's become like a really desirable place to live. I don't really know how like growing up there would have impacted my, my life as like a yeah. musician, but it was just a really like nice you know, place. Like it was a nice place area. to, it was a nice place like to grow up. Or... Yeah, it was just like parks, like great parks. And I could walk my dog, like my dog Toddy, who was like a beautiful fox terrier, rest in peace. Long time ago though, it was when I was like 13, so yeah. I'm, I'm all I'm past it now. Yeah, I mean I love Petersham, I still live there, and uh, I probably will live there for quite a bit more, just because it's it's such like a, I'm so familiar with it now, and like, Sydney is so small that, yeah. like when you get to know where you are, it's kind of like, you, you feel like you, you, it's like all mapped out from, from anywhere you're standing, so like, when I'm at, back at home in Petersham, I'm just like, I immediately know everything around me from like, to the, from the beach to like the most furthest suburbs, like yeah. west. So yeah, it's like the perfect kind of home base for me to like go see friends and go out and stuff like that. What did you do around there growing up, like in your free time? Just played like a lot of sport with my brothers yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I mean, Petersham was really not like a, anything to do other than like, I don't know, what, what do people do when they're growing up? Like play like, sp like sport or like watch TV and like yeah. play video games. That's all I did, but Petersham was just really nice because it was like a very leafy, like green, like nature, like nature oriented, like suburb. Yeah, it was just like a good little harbor, safe harbor to like learn to appreciate oneself yeah. and like <laughs> appreciate the inner west of Sydney and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's like even like Facebook groups dedicated to like the inner west and like the inner west is the best. <laughs> like, it's a bit snooty and stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> Your parents are both like artistic, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. My, my dad's a, a painter and um. My, my mom's a composer. Oh, this is like in there when they were younger. Now they're just like retired parents. When they were younger, they used to like live in LA together and my mom would write music for Hollywood oh, really? films and stuff. And Wait, my dad- so they met in LA or? Uh, no, they knew each other for a long time before um, they moved to LA. But um, they were kind of like a power couple. And I have like Damn, so, I have, I have, like, so many up. good photos. <laughs> I have so many good photos them of them. Up. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't know if they'll come up on the internet, they're like a bit older, <laughs> but um, yeah, like they're sometimes on like IMDb, my like, mom come up for like some certain films and stuff. Just having two artists for parents kind of didn't really give me much choice. I was like, I don't want to do like something else. My parents did it. I can, I should be able yeah. to do art as well. They really like nurtured the idea of um, being an artist and then not being like a, a problem if we didn't, you know, get into jobs straight away and yeah. like if we weren't pursuing like something that was like had a monetary gain straight away. Mm -hmm. So I was at university doing arts, which, you know, doesn't always lead to like a great job. And I was like, you know what, just do your degree, keep working on like finding whatever it is you want to do. Then we just like ended up doing music and they were like just happy that we had managed to do something that we liked. And it was also something that, you know, they could understand. Growing up, were your favorite subjects creative subjects? I did both at the time. Yeah. I did like science and maths and then I ended up dropping maths because I was really bad at it. Mm -hmm. And um, I did the art and uh, history and stuff. So. You know, um, the HSC, which is kind of like 
our version of SAT. Okay, yeah. Um, I, I did like biology, um, like this thing called senior science, which is like dumb science, <laughs> because it was like one of the easier ones I felt I could do. Visual arts, um, music, which was like really like a blood subject, and like no, no one really cared about it. And um, English, and we had to do a, like we had to do a religion subject because yeah. I went to a Catholic school, so we had to like do studies of religion, which was like really really easy to do because it's like a, like a generic understanding of religion. It's like oh, like Christianity is about. Jesus and like Buddhism has Buddha like that was like how you pass how you pass it so it was like not really much required yeah. from that point I kind of just stopped doing all science things though mm -hmm. I, I I tried to keep doing it I was like this isn't like this isn't for me like I had a bit of a knack for it but I was just like I'm not gonna be like a scientist or yeah. like a doctor because I was already so into like writing music and stuff at the time so like that ended up kind oh, of, that, like before your brother introduced you oh uh, no really even good. yeah even then I was already like oh, I mean wow. I was playing guitar a lot and my and Patrick was playing piano yeah and um so we were already like you know, we were also in choirs when we were younger like yeah. we were singing in a choir so we kind of like naturally segued into music over time yeah. whether or not we like knew it was happening I feel like just for the way we grew up doing music like in the choir and learning because our parents made it, not made us like they wanted us to do it that we kind of end up finding your interests through that. Yeah. And even if it means like you stop doing it for a while, um, you stop doing like uh, singing in a choir, you stop like getting piano lessons, you still have that like, that seed like yeah. from when you were younger. Thank you mum and dad for like kind of doing that. <laughs> I mean at the time I hated it, but I, I can see that I paid off now. What type of music did our parents play at home when you were growing up? Um, a lot of stuff. It was like, they used to play a thing called uh, Switched On Bach. Mm -hmm. So Bach's like the, the famous composer from like way back. And um, these people had gone and remade every single Bach song with a synthesizer. So like note yeah. by note, they'd change like all the patches and the chords and yeah. unplug and plug them back in. And they wrote like all these new scores. So we were like listening to this really kind of zany like Bach music that wasn't yeah. like played on piano, but like on weird synthesizers wow. and stuff. So that was like, I used to hate it because he played, my dad would play it so many times <laughs> that I completely lost interest in it. I'm like, how can you listen to this so many times? I mean, other than that, it was like, it's like the Beatles and then a lot of like yeah. disco, like Boney M and like Donna Summer, Chaka Khan and like all these kind of people that are like seminal disco artists. And like that was definitely a big influence, I feel, because we kind of ended up gravitating towards like more colorful, mm. like um, upbeat tempo yeah. music and stuff that really made you want to dance. So. I feel like disco was like a huge influence on um on our writing. Even if our music doesn't sound like inherently like disco, I think it would have like uh, yeah, I kind of helped it. it. So for studying music at university, was that your choice or was that your parents choice oh. that they had that you, they wanted you to have a degree? I mean, they like they they definitely encouraged us going to university and getting a degree, even if it was just an arts degree, just so we were broadening our horizons and had something under our belt. And even though it took me like six years to finish my arts degree because music started getting really busy after oh, a while. Yeah, that's so, um, yeah, but I mean, I still really wanted to finish it because, like, one, it's a waste of money, and two, like, I want to see it through. And I actually really enjoyed going to university, and I think maybe I'll end up going back again to do, oh, yeah? like, do, like, art or something at one of the, the uh, art schools. There's not that many in Sydney anymore because, unfortunately, they're trying to, like, get rid of the arts in Australia a bit because it's not really helping the country, well they don't think it's helping the country grow economically even. The government in, that's in right now is kind of trying to push more doctors, engineers and stuff like that into the country rather than people that are not going to make yeah. the country money. But you studied music, Yeah, I did right? study music. And, and um, it helped your... It did help, like, yeah. It was, or, like, I mean, we were, like, we were already like writing music um, to an extent, like we were maybe two, two years into writing together as just brothers at the time. Yeah. We weren't close to midnight yet. We went and did this course called uh, Music Theory 1. And it was like really, really helpful in like learning how to craft songs, like structure them, and like learn like the rules of music, so that you, even if you like went to go on and like ignore the rules, you had that like base understanding. Yeah. And um, I like, couldn't recommend that course more. It's like it was so helpful for us learning how to, you know, like find out the progression of a song because like once you know that there are actual, there's like, for example, you play one chord, there are like two or three chords that, that you have to do next so it makes it a lot easier to suddenly know what you have yeah. to do instead of just kind of like feeling about in the dark and like trying to write chords by like ear or like just seeing and how it goes mm -hmm. like you know like the options and then you can just try them and if they don't work then you know like the next option you can do yeah. and it's not like it kind of reduces your ability to write music because now you're doing it by these rules it kind of just make, like kind of lays a foundation for writing tracks so we ended up using a lot more 
and we we found that we were riding tracks that felt like a lot like they had a lot more flow and structure. Mm -hmm. But previously, we were just like, what happens now? What happens now? I don't know. And like, whilst that is a thing, it just was for the music that we wanted to ride. It was just not not doing it. But you started off doing mostly like remixes or like your own. Yeah, I think like when you're when you're、um, getting started in music, you find that you like the reason you're getting into music in the first place is because you have all these、um, people that you really look up to. Yeah. So you end up like getting these people, and then you kind of just want to remix them. And like,、yeah. how would I do this? Or even just like finding like acapellas online that were easy to get, and then just、mm-hmm. writing a song underneath it. Yeah. You didn't have the opportunity to like get people to sing with you. Do you think that'd be different to Cosmos and Midnight since you know how to make music from scratch if you already had a lead singer in the group?、Or? Oh yeah, I mean,、yeah. if I even if just one of us could sing, it would be so like, so like beneficial. I mean,、yeah. that's what pa- even Patrick is like. Start, he's starting to sing in our songs now. Oh okay. Which is like really, he's got like、yeah. quite a cool voice. And it's definitely not like the kind of singing where it takes the focus of the song, but kind of works more as like an、yeah. instrument or like, like fits in with the entire like、yeah. instrumental. This is like suddenly Pat's gonna be like a pop star. I'd say like chill wave style singing where you kind of like really like reverb it out and like sit it in the like down in the mix a bit more, so it kind of just、yeah. sits in there really nicely. So you met Basenji and Wave Racer、uh, like in, on a Facebook group or something?、Um, or how? So actually, I met Basenji and Wave Racer on SoundCloud because a friend of theirs who I went to university with in um drawing class was like, hey,、uh, my friends are playing a show at so and so tonight. Do you want to come? And I was like, Yeah, sure. And he's like, Oh, we'll check them out on SoundCloud. I, we checked it out, and it was like kind of what you'd call now, like as future funk, which is like really hot right now.、Yeah. But back then, it was kind of like forward thinking because no one was really doing it other than like a few other people in the world. Both Basenji and Wave Racer were working on music together as a,、um, a project called Pablo J and the Lobsterettes. Yeah, which is like a weird little clips of that. <laughs> <laughs> they used to he used to like cut together like old films and stuff into his own film clips. It was like so cool. I was like going through them the other day, like having a cry. I was like, I remember this so. Oh, well. the stalls. Yeah, I was like, no, it was like good, the good time. <laughs> Back when we were happy. <laughs> we we messaged them on SoundCloud、yeah. and went to their show and like didn't really talk them much because we were all too shy. And then I just went to this girl's birthday and I saw him there and I was like, hey,、uh, let me just introduce myself now. We ended up like hitting it off and then we hung out like progressively more because like, like we had interests in the same type of music,、yeah. which was like my、um, like, garage and my、like, house and stuff at the time. I mean, like before. Or was that after? This was kind of just as Flume started. Like, doing the whole like Australian, like the movement、yeah. together. You guys yeah, yeah. All part of it. We all kind of came up at the so same how time. How did you? How was like all the come up of all you Australian? I mean,、musicians? I mean, we, I feel like for us, it, like an artist, it was a really big turning point for like、um, me and Pat and our friend Tom, who's like now Wave Racer,、yeah. was this、um, artist called Rusty, who is like、uh, from Glasgow, and he kind of had the most influential. Album of all time in maybe 2013 or 2012 called our Glass Swords, and it was like what people would kind of call like future bass now.、Yeah. Although back then I wouldn't call it future bass because it was like the only thing that had that sound. Yeah. And I mean for for us that was like a really big game changer for us because it was like such a, a mix of sound. It was kind of like、um, kind of like hip hop mixed with like video game music and like. Trap and stuff like that. Like Glasgow has always been like a really forward-thinking country with like、yeah. artists like Rusty, Hudson Mohawk,、yeah. S-Type. I mean, Scotland is a country, not Glasgow. Yeah. But、uh, S-Type and Sam Gallatri or Gallatri, I don't know how to say、oh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all seem to have this mix of like the old school with like the new school at the same time,、mm-hmm. where they use like retro synths, kind of like the Core Gam One, which I think Sam Gallatri uses a lot. Which is was used in like early video games all the time. That style, like kind of, I guess, what is the the Scotland like Glasgow. Like hip hop sound is what really like was a turning point for us Pretty, to be like、yeah. we're not doing house anymore we're not doing like all the stuff we kind of want to do this、yeah. now so even though it wasn't what necessarily what we started writing it was a it was a point where we really wanted to do music like、yeah. really like pursue it like earnestly and most really been super receptive was it from the onset they were receptive of this yeah yeah because before it was like ma- bands right yeah it was, like it was pretty much in, Australia's been so band oriented for years and even now it's still very band heavy、mm-hmm. but it's like Particularly because of this、um, radio presenter called、uh, Nina Las Vegas. Oh, she was like, yeah, 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 she was like really pro like electronic music and like bringing up like young artists who didn't really have much attention、mm-hmm. or like the opportunity to get known. So she was kind of like, I feel almost single-handedly responsible for like making electronic music possible in Australia,、yeah. as well as like the like the rise of Bloom and stuff like that. She kind of made people get more in, like like turn people's interest away from bands and more towards like. People being able to do this in their bedroom, like with a laptop. That was kind of like the turning point now, from bands to to people making music like at home. Yeah. And it was just like so 
good to see how we could we're do that. We're kind of surprised to see the Australia scene get out there. Because, like, yeah. you guys pretty I mean, much set so the scene for, like, that type of electronic music. I mean, Australia's so isolated. Yeah. We're, like, by ourselves down the bottom of the world. And um, it was so insular. It was just like, oh, this band knows this band. And, like, it was all Aussie hip-hop, which mm. I hate. Surf rock and just, like, yeah. stuff that was, like, so it was, like, pretty good. Like, I don't mind a lot of it, but, like, <laughs> it was just no room for people to kind of grow and even now if someone does it's still kind of like wow you did it you did it man you got out of australia and you yeah. went international that's a really big deal what do you feel about that does it make you want to stay at home or does it make you want to like move to i like mean LA or something i, I mean I, I ideally i could always like stay at home because i love living in australia like the reality of it is, is that you kind of have to leave if you want to if you want to um really really push your, yeah. your music internationally because there's like no one comes through Australia to write yeah. music. No one's like, oh, I'm going to fly to Australia to write an album. Like, yeah. or like I'm going to fly to Australia to work with those two twins. Like, they'll, want, they'll do it if you're in LA. They'll do it if you're, like, in Sweden or, like, I don't know, a place where it makes sense to go meet, like, lots of people at the same time. So, like, I feel if you're going to make in Australia, you've got to make all your connections beforehand, like, on the internet. And that's kind of how it was for us. We, like, had this following on the internet and it took so long for us to, like, transfer into, like, being able to play shows because we had this kind of really dispersed following, although it was like kind of felt large at the time, it was like pockets all over the world. Yeah. So it was like really hard to get people from Australia to even know who we were, even though we felt like we had this kind of decent following. So yeah, I mean, it's still definitely really hard, especially with the closure of so many clubs now in Australia, because of the lockout laws. It means that there's no real place for people to test out like DJing or test out their music or even like build a small local following at any club because there's just no place to do that anymore. It was like, it's like two, two or three clubs that even like allow people to, to stay open like for a certain amount of time. So it's really, really, really hard. So you think you're gonna stay there? But then yeah. Like yeah. 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 I think, I think I could do it for like, for periods of time. Maybe I could do like, three months in LA or, three months in like Sweden or something like that. But at the end of the day, I do want to live at home in Australia. It's where I'm like comfortable and I love being. And I want to get to the point where. I don't have to go to people anymore. Like, I can just send them stuff on the internet. I mean, that was what was so good about SoundCloud and stuff but until it kind of got to the status in now where they got so crushed by, like, yeah, industry pressure that they couldn't even, like... Articles coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Ripped SoundCloud. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I think producers are getting really nostalgic. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, I remember... Oh, I regret it. We all remember the days of when our SoundCloud was a thing, right? But it's, it kind of just come to the point now where, like, although I love SoundCloud rap, it's kind of like that's one of the only things now that gets like the the hype behind it yeah. and like it's come to the point now where like unless you're like a really really big and established artist you kind of need to get a lot of help from like people to like build your yeah. like re repost yeah. you and like post about your stuff and like links to your soundcloud otherwise i don't even find it in the first place it was great for like for, like bringing up small talent and like building small like communities around certain sounds but i feel like now soundcloud like kind of only a place for like rap music. The same artists that usually will get so many plays just kind of reduced to like 20% of their normal amount, even though they're like huge. So like, how does this happen? Do you think yeah. that changes the way people consume music? I guess they're on Spotify now. I mean, I feel like SoundCloud's still kind of like a, it's still its own thing. Like you can't, you won't get that music on Spotify and people won't consume that music on Spotify either. I just don't think you, you will find artists like, crossing over from SoundCloud to Spotify as much as they'd hope unless they're writing something a bit more mainstream or a bit more like digestible because the thing about SoundCloud is that everyone on there is kind of like more open-minded to like things not having vocals on it just being like yeah. an instrumental or like not much like structure exactly it doesn't yeah. it can kind of be anything and get like lots of plays or it could it could used to get lots of plays yeah. but now like if you want something to get big on Spotify it's got to be like a hit Kinda, or like be like a sleeper hit where some, some, for some reason like it just got really big yeah. even though it has no vocals which is kind of rare now unfortunately yeah. and like that's something we want to do like while we're writing is to still like flex our production side and not have any vocals on our tracks and stuff just mm -hmm. to be like we're, we're still doing this in, yeah. our, in our music because I feel it's really important to like show that you can be 100% of the song and not have anything else and it still is, like maintains interest and stuff like that for, this is your first like world tour kind of right? yeah well I mean yeah, we've like been like we've been around, but like this is the first time we've labeled it. Like, yeah, it's the first time we've recorded a world tour, but like it's also the first time we've gone from like Sydney, I mean from Australia, onto like Asia, and then onto America. So done like different continents in like one tour. Actually, coming to Asia finally. I mean, we've had so many opportunities to come, but we just like 
the the dates between shows were so far apart that we oh. couldn't like it would be like oh we're in Asia for two months doing like one show <laughs> like every like seven days or something yeah. so it's actually really good to like see it all come together and um, after just seeing like the interest and like the reaction to our shows so far we're like oh we got to come back and do more I'm like to the point where I'm like this can go Australia, Asia, Australia, Asia, yeah. Australia, Asia, and then like Actually, yeah, America yeah. like once a year. That's like, the good thing about you too, because like even on the road, because you're a duo and you perform a lot, yeah. you just do it like on the road, so. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really ideal. Actually, just touring with like a, a twin is really yeah. good to like offset loneliness. Even if we get, on, like, get on each other's nerves a lot and like being in each other's company still just feels like I don't know, like you're not with someone because you know them so well. It's kind of like you just sit there in silence sometimes. I, but so nice. when I am by myself, I'm like, oh, wow. this is how it feels to be like completely lonely. <laughs> no. I don't think I can. Untwinified. <laughs> yeah, yeah untwinified. Yeah, I just know because like um, some of my friends that tour a lot and like are by themselves, they're like, fuck, I'm so, I'm so bored and lonely. Yeah. Like they don't have the opportunity to meet people because they're only in places for such a short amount yeah. of time. So unless you're like really outgoing and like the kind of person that makes like a friend in like an hour, yeah. then um. <laughs> It's kind of going to end up a bit of like a solitary experience, like yeah. doing these tours. So yeah, I feel for them. It's good. It's good having someone there, even if it's like the person you're always hanging out with. Yeah. What do you want to be remembered for? For for our music. I don't know. I haven't actually thought about that ever. <laughs> I'd like people to to feel like we weren't really trying to exist in any genre or time, and we were mm -hmm. just doing music that felt like it sat. It could be played in a, like in a year from now or ten years from now. And it would be like those songs that you listen to that are 40 years old yeah. and they still feel as fresh like every time you listen to Classic. them. Yeah, I yeah, just want to like write classics basically and not really worry about the genres they are. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. I'm exhausted. See yeah. you guys.